What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and another Outriders video. Over the last couple of days, or maybe even more than that, I've had a little side hustle, a little side project if you will, and I've been looking at the Heat Seeker set for the Pyromancer, one of the new legendary sets that came with World Slayer, and trying to see if there was a way that I could change this very, very good AoE, able to deal with trash very easily set, into kind of like a hybrid that was also good at single point damage to bosses like the second arbiter for instance now in a way i suppose i have good news and i have bad news and it's simply the point that because we have now been spoiled by the goodness that is eruption specifically eruption based off the lava lich set which is just so really really good at killing bosses very fast but then also because of the sheer size of the eruptions that you put down also being able to very effectively clear trash that it is an extremely high let's say measurement that any other build has to try and beat now i like the way heat seeker plays i especially like the bonus that comes with the legendary set and the way how that interacts and how you can sort of propagate these thermal bombs all over the place and kill everything and i do like the fact that it also kind of plays into the whole debuffing archetype that I enjoy so much with the Pyromancer. But in terms of sheer raw power, this build does not compare with that. I think unless something drastically changes, Eruption will be most likely the most powerful thing that we can see for Pyromancer now for the foreseeable future. Does it mean that there are other builds that are faster at clearing than Eruption? Sure, that's possible. But I think when it comes to an all-round package, when you have the build completely farmed out and everything like that, I think Eruption Pyro is probably as near to perfect as you get. But the, that's the bad news. <laughs> the good news is when we actually swap some things around with the Heat Seeker setup and we bring Phaser into the mix, we do actually smooth out some of that power problems that we have against bosses. It's not nearly as effective or as impressive as Eruption, but it definitely stands on its own and actually plays quite nice when you pair the ramp up of damage or the debuffing that comes from thermal bombs and its ability to spread amongst enemies through the heat seeker set bonus and then the pinpoint accuracy and damage delivery that you get from phaser now, all in all i like little pet projects like this because even though i have efficiency in mind always when i think about builds and thinking about wanting to kill stuff fast and quick I do also like just playing a little bit off the meta sometimes, just doing something different. I mean, if you've done 16 hours straight with Eruption, you might just be in the mood for something different. And there's definitely been some players in the community asking for something that incorporates Heatseeker and Phaser. And I kind of feel like this is probably in the right place where it needs to be right now. Are there some improvements that we can make to the build and maybe swapping out some gear pieces? Sure, that's really the case for any build. But I think as it stands right now, this works fairly well and it's something that i don't mind running when i run with other people now when it comes to the actual build itself and as usual please don't mind my transmog it is my very technical way in which i keep track of my sets so that i don't accidentally delete something at least until we get the locking feature which hopefully comes at the end of this month or maybe halfway through august most likely but as usual we'll look at the weapons first then we'll look at the armor mods We'll look at the skills, we'll talk about the rotation, we'll look at the class tree, we'll look at the packs choices that I've made for this build, and lastly, I'll give some suggestions on which ascension points you should prioritize. And when it comes to the weapon, uh, honestly though, the last couple of pyro videos that I've made, I've found what I would consider a, the perfect combo in terms of weapons that I field with my pyromancer. So generally speaking, I have a ramp up weapon that I use on bosses to give myself as much AP as possible through the ramp up that we get with Mage's Rage and so on. And then I kind of have my, I'm running around and killing trash weapon, right? So basically when it comes to that, then my ramp up weapon is an air to the desert because it has armor pierce on and because it is a assault rifle of the tactical variant, which means I can be very accurate with it. Even a boomer like me who can aim, and this has Sandstorm, Mage's Rage, and Fortress on it. So this is the perfect ramp up stick for me here. The only other thing that I would potentially change it is if there was some ungodly way for me to get first things first on this, which is obviously impossible, unless we were able to get it on a purple somehow. Or on the other hand, like if you didn't have access to Fortress, for instance, if it was first things first and Mage's Rage and Sandstorm, that would have still been like really good. Then when it comes to my secondary which is my running around and you know fucking killing trash weapon that's of course another air to the desert because again the armor piercing is too good it is just too damn good 
and then on here sandstorm again as always we have death through gnome on here which gives me that nice flat anomaly power increase across the board and then firestorm so that i can inflict burn onto enemies at the start of my combo and also because firestorm really becomes this great area denial sort of attack and generally speaking even without dropping any abilities any thermal bombs any phaser strikes anything like that if you put sandstorm and firestorm on even a captain or elite that is usually enough to murder that out completely now the pistol doesn't really matter here but in the case of this i do run around with a lucky with weakness trap and firestorm on but when we get over to the armor itself of course this uses heat seeker so i have three piece heat seeker on here and then i have two other legendary pieces now the first improvement that I would make to this build that would definitely increase the damage profile of your phaser is to make sure that you stack as many pieces of gear with status on. We know that status actually makes your phaser shoot harder, it actually empowers it. And so definitely having a weapon with status on is already a step in the right direction. And then trying to make sure that you have as many armor pieces with status on. The first thing you'll notice about my setup here is only two of my five pieces have status on. So as soon as I am able to get better pieces, specifically a different headpiece and a different chest piece that actually have status, that is going to increase my damage profile quite considerably, just having that on that additional two pieces there. However, that's not the case right now. And for now, I only have it on my legs and on my gloves. Now, when we get to the headpiece, this is Anomaly Visage. Of course, we want to stack as much Anomaly power as possible. This is an AP build. It's not firepower. So on here, I have Anomaly Echo, which means that whenever I activate a skill, I get some firepower and I get some Anomaly. I'm really interested in that Anomaly. And so this is just a great little buff mechanic that you have whenever you use your skills. And the build has extremely low cooldowns and you can even activate this with a melee. So you'll always have this buff up if you pay attention to it. I have Death Sentence on here because one of the skills that I use on this build is Ash Blast. Ash Blast is a fantastic ability to control enemies trying to charge you down. It's a great way to debuff enemies through the use of Death Sentence, for instance, because this means that your weapon damage and anomaly damage against enemies that have been hit by the Ash Blast is increased by 40 to 30% for 5 seconds. This is really good as part of a ramp up to deliver a phaser downrange. So when you're good to go on the phaser, you hit the Ash Blast, you wait until it hits everything, and then you run the phaser through them. I have double fun on here because the other side of this build is of course thermal bomb we want to be spreading those thermal bombs hitting as many enemies as possible the thermal bombs make enemies burn which means our abilities deal more damage against them and it also spreads more due to the heat seeker legendary bonus that we're going to look at just now and last but not least this just allows you to actually double stack thermal bombs for that additional damage that you get from branded which is another mod that we'll see just now Speaking of which, when we get over to the chest piece here, you'll see I have branded on here. This says that enemies affected by the skill receive 30% more damage. This is one of the more powerful debuff tools that are that is available to the pyro. And due to the fact that you are able to cast thermal bomb twice, you can actually double stack this ability onto enemies. Ashen boost is on your fast because of course. The other side, our Ash Blast that we're using the whole time, is another way for us to just gain additional damage on those enemies. Furthermore, in our class tree, we also make so that enemies that are finished burning actually get Ash status inflicted on them, which means more damage to that. Fire Trap is one of the mods which comes with the Heat Seeker set. This is fantastic. This says that using the skill on a target marked or afflicted by burn, so in other words, if it's already got the burn status on it, creates an explosion dealing a certain amount of damage in a four meter radius this means that look by default thermal bomb applies to an enemy and then if the enemy dies while that debuff is on it then it explodes this actually makes an explosion at the beginning as well and oftentimes this can cause a ripple effect because other things that are around it that also have thermal bomb on that then then can start the cascade where all the thermal bombs explode and sort of spread all over now when we get over to the legs this is our first piece of heat seeker so let's look at what this set bonus does this says that after a successful detonation thermal bomb travels to the target with the lowest health in a 25 meter radius which is massive thermal bomb applied this way deals 50 percent less damage but it can chain up to three times this is how with hitting thermal bomb twice and sending out those four thermal bombs into a group of enemies and then maybe just shooting into the group once to sort of start that cascade can get this to completely eviscerate an entire group of enemies and it is really really satisfying to watch 
I believe it's been dubbed the popcorn build or you know that's basically what people are referring to it but that's essentially the heat seeker play style is to try and get the thermal bombs on as many enemies as possible and just fuck up their day so on here on the leg armor we have no resistance against the fortified we are using the whole armor piercing getting changed into resistance piercing which gets changed into ap we are using that little combo there so this is the one piece of the combo we'll look at the other mod just now that does that helps with that we have fire frenzy on here because we absolutely want to have access to two applications of thermal bomb before it goes on cooldown and we have size matters on here because we want our phaser to be nice and thick nice and girthy uh by default phaser is literally a laser so you have to kind of like if you don't have this mod on you have to watch your accuracy and be good but if you turn this on you are basically good to go and you can play the game without glasses because essentially all you have to do is you just have to aim the phaser in the general direction of a cluster of enemies and it'll actually sort of like zero all of them out and murder them when we get over to the gloves we have ashen champion on here which is a phaser beam debuff uh, skill which then basically says inflicts ash on enemies instead of burn again just us applying that ash effect this says that each enemy hit boosts your anomaly power by 20 percent for 10 seconds so when you hit people with the phaser beam and you're able to hit five enemies that means then that your ap is increased by 100 percent for the follow-up phaser beam shot because our cooldowns are low enough that we can get two phases out within almost well almost two phases out in a 10 second spread so that means our first phaser will sometimes be like our power up phaser if i can put it that way and then our second phaser will be the nice and big chunky one now we have true blast on here as well which is that it increases the explosion damage by 1 million this is of thermal bomb so this again just helps your thermal bomb to push out a little bit of additional damage we also have arms and anomaly on here because this says that critical shots increase your anomaly power by a set percentage for six seconds and this is also on a six second cooldown which means but you by applying criticals the whole time you can pretty much make sure that this is always up now this helps out with the whole ramp up mechanic as well as i referred to before so when you have to deal with bosses you can take you know make attention of hitting this otherwise sometimes you'll just be running through a crowd and you can just strafe and if you hit an accidental headshot then boom you got that additional ap now, last but not least we get over to the boots the boots is what's going to give us captain hunter to just help us deal more damage against captains elites and bosses which is something that this build struggles with a little bit unless you use phaser or eruption or something that can dump a lot of damage onto something we have bullet kindling on here because of course we want to be dealing additional damage to stuff that's on fire that's burning because everything is going to be on fire and burning so this is a good idea and uh, because of the thermal bombs of course and then last but not least we have unstoppable force on here which is the combo as i mentioned between this mod and no resistance is the fortified which allows us to stack armor piercing and resistance piercing and therefore have a whole bunch of additional ap now you can see by default i'm running around with 65 percent of resistance piercing and 40 percent of armor piercing because of those mods that armor piercing gets translated into resistance piercing which is already present here and then this is added as a percentage base to our anomaly power which increases our overall you know uh damage profile basically so when we then go over to the skills themselves i think that's pretty obvious by now we are using thermal bomb we are using ash blast and we are using phaser beam as our boss damaging tool or ability now thermal bomb we get two of them for every 6.4 second cooldown and we get ash blast on an almost a 10 second cooldown and we get phaser beam on just below seven seconds that's why i said that with the phaser beam your first one could possibly be the ramp up one so maybe shoot that into a crowd and you get that additional damage from 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 the buff and then with your second phaser beam with that 100 percent increased ap you hit nice and hard now when we get over to the class tree and by the way i mean the rotation then clearly is as you're running around you apply thermal bomb to trash as much as possible you ash blast to sort of freeze them into position or something like that if you want to get a nice cluster shot or if you're getting pushed by a bunch of enemies and you send, sort of just search the crowd for the asshole the the captain the elite running around and you pop them with the phaser beam and that's it you move on so the class tree itself i do want to end up in the middle at the end with magma elemental with firestorm because just the 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 sheer increase to armor piercing and resistance piercing that you get from that first phaser again just the whole idea of your first phaser is a warm-up phaser and your second phaser after that is the kill phaser 
So you'll definitely notice that when you play the build is your first phaser is not going to be that great. And then your, first, your second phaser hits for like 45 mil, 55 mil, 65 mil, something like that. So we are going to be going down here and we're trying to pick up as much anomaly power and damage to enemies that are burning as we can. We go ahead and we grab gifted here for some more anomaly power. And then we go around the top here and we make sure to penetrate all the way down tempers to the point where we can pick up with fire and anomaly. This is going to mean that whenever we activate an explosive skill, i.e. thermal bomb, we're going to get that 12% of additional anomaly power for 10 seconds. And it's a small little ramp. 12% is not a shitload, but hey, every little bit helps. We do get extinction here because this is like just, you know, execution damage for us, basically. So as soon as enemies get below 30% of the HP, they take 20% more damage. Then we go up here because now we're trying to get to the end of the firestorm tree. So again, we pick up some additional damage where we can. We pick up some burn afflicted on enemies last longer. We definitely get all of these because we have to as we move to the tree. We get fuel for the embers, which gives us double skill leech when you're under 30% of max health. Generally, survivability with this build is not a problem due to the fact that you have so many thermal bombs popping and going off and basically feeding you HP. So you should be fine, but that certainly does help. We do pick up trial by fire, which is more damage against enemies that are burning. And uh, we get warm up here because we want to drive down our cooldowns as much as possible. Last but not least, we get magma elemental, which is another ramp up mechanic. As I mentioned, that first phaser gets us more resistance piercing and more resistance and more armor piercing, which inversely or not, not inversely is the wrong word, which directly translates to more HP, H AP, not HP. Jesus, what's going on in my mouth? All right. So the pax tree is a bit of a of a of a frankenstein situation so unfortunately we don't actually push through to any of the capstones because our main delivery for damage against again like i said you're not going to have a problem with trash you're not going to have a problem with captains and elites our main problem with this build is killing bosses in a semi-decent amount of time and so for this case we have to kind of like split the tree up a little bit so we do want to get melting point which gives us more resistance piercing again just translating into more damage more ap we do want to get master exploder here this says explosive skill damage is increased by 100 percent of your resistance piercing we have a shitload of resistance piercing so this is going to make those thermal bombs hit for a lot now the reason why we don't pick up scorch flesh is this would be good because again this feeds status power into your build directly the only problem we have is that activating ignite skills increases your status power by 10 percent for five seconds we only have one ignites to kill and that is phaser this stacks up to three times but is active for five seconds so it means that we're not going to be able to capitalize on that rotation because our phaser takes longer than that to actually get ready to be used again so in that case we rather go with master exploder now convection here is a no-brainer this gives us our cooldown reduction or beefs up our cooldown reduction like to the max so that we get access to our abilities quicker we do get furnace here and this is a good way for us to actually you know make our our phases a little bit more spicy and this says that it increases your status power by 15 percent for every enemy afflicted with burn now you're going to be putting a lot of stuff on burn so again the rotation it's important that if you are fighting a group of enemies that you get a couple of thermal bombs in there because once those thermal bombs start spreading around and everything like that you're going to have enemies that are on fire that have burn on them and that's going to beef up your status power and that's going to make your phases hit for much harder we do pick up backdraft as well here which then says your anomaly power is increased by 30 percent for every skill on cooldown again just just helps with those big phaser hits so you're going to go thermal bomb thermal bomb and then for good measure you're going to do an ash blast pro and then at that point the only skill that's going to be av available for you to click is phaser and it's going to benefit from this effect here now when we get over to the ascension tree i have a fuck ton of points here so um you know it's obviously going to be difficult for me to say which ones you should prioritize of something like this but if we're looking for more damage of course you want to be going for anomaly damage because that's just flat damage over the top you can go for more anomaly power you can feed more into this armor piercing resistance piercing combo by grabbing resistance piercing and armor piercing here if you are looking for a little bit more life back from your abilities, then of course, skill leech is a good idea as well. Status is fantastic to pick up because it's going to make your, your burn ticks tick for more. It's going to make your ash blast freeze enemies for longer, and it's going to make your phaser hit harder. Cooldown reduction is always good as well, just for you to get a little bit more cooldown reduction. And then of course, if you're having a hard time with elites and you think that that can help here, you can also get 
damage mitigation from elites but also dealing more damage against elites last but not least you can actually just give yourself some flat health armor and uh, healing received buff here as well if that's the sort of thing but definitely i would say that the majority of your let's say your first 50 60 70 points should be sitting within the anomaly bracket here because more damage is just gonna make you kill stuff faster and shit that's dead can kill you and that's it for the build and the video thank you so much for watching especially if you made it this far let me know in the comments down below besides the things which i said like you know getting more status into the build everything like that would there be anything else that you would change with this would you swap some other mods in here is it worth it to potentially move away from ash blast and incorporate heat wave in which kind of changes the dynamic of the build a little bit but certainly makes gives you the ability to put more stuff on fire which translates into more status bar which translates into heavier hitting phases that is something that i might try down the line however it's going to require a complete overhaul of the gear pieces so again hopefully those pieces drop for me and i can actually experiment with it but let me know if you're gonna try something like this if you're happy with sticking with the eruption because it really is that good there's nothing wrong with sticking with a winner the shit is that good so why wouldn't you and other than that it is just super important to me that you have a fantastic morning afternoon and evening wherever you are in the world and until next video fucking cheers they want the best of me now best of me now best of me now best of me they want the best of me now best of me now best of me now best of me they want the best of me now